This interview is being conducted on May 26, 2005 at the Niles Public Library in Niles, Illinois. My name is Kate Wallachy. I am speaking with Orville Wilbur Skibby. Mr. Skibby was born on October 27, 1925 in Chicago, Illinois, and now lives in Niles, Illinois. Mr. Skibby learned of the Veterans History Project through the Niles newsletter. He has kindly consented to be interviewed for the project. Here is his story. Pretty good, huh? <laughs> Pretty quick. So the first thing we usually ask is, when did you enter the service? When did you start? The uh, service? Yeah. Uh, I went in in the, the first month, the 12th day of uh, 44, and I got out of the service in the, the 12th, uh, I mean, the, the first month, the 12th day of 46. Uh, I was in the CVs, I was in the 81st CVs and the 94th CVs, and uh, our job was to go over to Normandy, it was called uh, Sugar Red Beach at the time, and we built a, a chow hall and the uh, Army Rest Camp. And uh, after a few months of staying there, I really don't know how long we stayed there, but uh, then we were ordered to ship out back to the States, and we went, we wound up at the uh, South Pacific. I went to uh, Inuita, Okinawa, and we were stationed on Okinawa with Admiral Limits, his outfit. And uh, we built the uh, Army Rest Camp up there in chow halls. And so that's about all I can say. So what were you doing before you were in the service? Uh, I was in construction work mostly. Whatever job I could hold, that's, that's the job I took. So, but most of my jobs were always on the outside. And when I, and when I returned from the CVs, I uh, got a job with construction again. And then I applied for a civil service job. And I went in when uh, Mayor Daly went in, senior. And I've been with them ever since I retired. And I was a tree trimmer. So did you, were you drafted or did you enlist? Uh, I went in just before I would enlist because my brother told me that he said, if you wanted to go in the Navy, you better enlist because when they draft they usually draft you right into the, the Army. So I went down uh, just before I was in, uh, drafted, and I enlisted into the, the Navy. But uh, I heard about the Seabees, so we, we got transferred over to the Seabees, and that's how I become a Seabee. So just by accident? <laughs> well, yeah, actually it was just by accident. Yeah. So there wasn't a good, there wasn't a reason that you chose that? No, no. But uh, our outfit was uh, made up with a lot of older uh, fellers because they were uh, uh, experienced in building and construction workers. And I, me and a few other ones were the youngest guys in our outfit because they're, most of them were a lot older than we were. You know. And uh, but we, 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 uh, I learned a lot in the CBs. We used to wash our clothes in the, the helmet until we decided, uh, some of the fellows decided, well, let's let, make a wash machine. So we made a wash machine out of a 55-gallon drum, uh, a stick with a windmill. And when the windmill would blow, the stick would go down with a plunger on it, and we throw our clothes in, and that's how we washed our clothes. Really? Yeah. And then we decided, taking that bat, just with a, a helmet or anything, we decided to make a, a shower. So we got a 55-gallon drum. We had a, a shower head put on it, and we filled the thing with the warm water. With the sun would warm the water, and we stand and pull the chain, and we had our showers. <laughs> so did you do that? Were you you were in the so you were the CBs were part of the Navy? Yeah, we we were, yeah first the uh, at, at when we first went in, not me, but when uh, the CBs were. Uh, connected with uh, the Marines because uh, one of our outfits got almost 90% of them got killed because they had no weapons. And then they decided that we better arm these people, you know. So the, the Marines uh, took us and they trained us and they give us weapons, they give us carbines. 
and they had something to defend ourselves with, you know. And then after, a, I forget how long it was afterwards, they said the Navy was going to take us over. So then we went into the Navy. The Navy branch took us over, and so we would be called the Navy Seabees. Huh. So. That's interesting. So what was it like at the beginning? What were your first days like? Do you remember? Yeah, I was all excited about getting in there, but after I got in there, I really wasn't in love with it because I figured, what did I do, you know? And uh, I was scared, you know. I was just just turned 18, and uh, we had our, our air raids every night coming over, you know. And uh, but it turned out to be pretty good. I met a bunch of nice fellows in there, and it got closer than brothers after a while, you know. And the old saying you say used to say is it never hit a CB because you might have a son in the Marines. <laughs> no, but it was mostly an older outfit that yeah. that we're in with. So. And obviously you had a lot of engineering experience. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So most of my time was spent in, in guard duty. Or I wound up in the kitchen. I love to cook, and to this day I, I enjoy cooking. So was uh, it was it an accident that you wound up in the kitchen, or were you on some kind of rotation? No, the first I was on the, uh, what do you call it, mess duty. And then uh, I started making salads and stuff, you know, in there. And I never turned out to be a, a top chef or anything, but I used to work in the kitchen most of the time that I was there. Yeah. So, uh, but it was a good experience because I still love to do it today. <laughs> Yeah. So when you went over, so did, did you do any training in the United States? Oh yeah, we had uh, we went to Great Lakes for our naval training, and from there we went to Camp Perry, Virginia, and then uh, was it North Lake, Virginia, and we shipped out from there, Camp Perry. So then at first you went across. Uh, across. And where'd you end we, up? At we first? went to Normandy. Uh, we for, uh, when we went over, we went to. Uh, to England, I think it was England first, and then from there we went to Normandy. And uh, I had a chance to ride on the, the Queen Mary. It was a troop ship they made out of the Queen Mary. And when I come back, I returned back on the, the USS Hornet, the aircraft carrier. That was an experience. How come? Uh, well, because uh, they were, the troops were all coming back and they used that for a supply ship coming back. We came back on that, so. So there were a lot of people. Oh, yeah, an awful lot of people on there. It looked like a football field up on the deck there. So, <laughs> so you were from Chicago, which right. is a pretty diverse place. Did you meet a lot of different kinds of people? Oh, yeah, yeah. There was one fellow that kind of took me underneath his wings because he used to find out that I could never get, a, I wasn't getting no mail back and forth, you know. And he asked me the reason why, and I said, well, I, I had a trouble with writing, you know. And he said, well, how about if we get together? He said, on a, on a weekend, and he says, we'll send a letter off to your mother or your friends. And he said, when you, when you get them, he said, call me and I, I'll help you with them. And I never forgot the man's name. His, his name was Capetti. And that's the only thing I remember I don't have the, his first name because I've been trying to look him up to see if he's still alive. If not, God bless him, you know. So. We can take a look, see yeah. if somebody put him in the World War II memorial. Pardon? We can see if somebody put him in the World War II memorial yeah, registry. Yeah. So, and, but I, I'd have to know the full name on him, you know. And yeah. The only thing I remember, we used to call him Capetti. It was an oddball name. <laughs> <laughs> Did people call you anything? Yeah, they called me Skip. How yeah. come? Well, nobody liked their first names. I was named after Orville Wilbur, <laughs> but I was Orville Wilbur Skippy instead of Orville Wilbur, right? <laughs> My mother always used to name us after famous people, you know. So uh, you ended up being named Skip yeah, after the famous I, Skip. Yeah, and it, no, all five, five brothers were called Skip. <laughs> so nobody liked their first name, so they took the name of Skip, so. <laughs> and I, I did wind up at one of the major airports, Chicago O'Hara Field. Yeah. So I was, I was a foreman out there, so. 
And all, wait, all your brothers were called Skip too? Mm -hmm. How did you keep track of who somebody well, was asking for? We really didn't need any names. My father used to just point at us and we knew who he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, no, I did that already. Okay, so had you ever been away from home before? No, that was the first, first time away from home. What was it like? Well, like I say, it was a little scary, but I got I got the acquainted pretty quickly, you know. So. You had so you had you had five brothers. Yeah, four five brothers? brothers and four sisters. Oh my goodness! So, so you know, two, three, four, four sisters and five brothers. Yeah. So were uh -huh. all were any of your brothers? Yeah, sisters my in the service? my first brother Charles. He was in the Pearl Harbor on the Pearl Harbor attack. And then I was in the Seabees, and I had a brother. He was in the Army, but he was, over, he was stationed in Alaska in the fire department. And I had an older brother who was, in the, he was, he was too old for the service, but he was in the CC camp. I don't know if you remember her, that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was in the CCs. So, yeah, that was, that was the experience for the, the boys. Any of your sisters involved? No. In the no. War effort no. At all? They're all housewives. Yeah. Um, do you remember, did you have any, boy, somebody put in here drill instructors. Did you have any, anybody pushing you around? No, no, not really. They're all, they're all pretty good. They did what they had to do, and I did what I had to do, so. And so you had to, you said the Marines taught you how to shoot? Well, no, we had, we had all that practice at Great Lakes when we went in, but uh, the Marines are the ones with, Give, give us the weapons and stuff, you know, so. Because uh, I forget what outfit it was. But they were building a, an airstrip, and uh, the Japanese came in there, and they, they killed so many of them because they had no nothing to defend themselves with. And that's when they decided to give us uh, uh, weapons. <laughs> G um. Do you remember where did you at Great Lakes or when you were training? Did you stay in in where were you staying? Were you in barracks? Were you in tents? Oh no, we were in bar in Great Lakes. We were in barracks. So what was it like? It was it was all right. I, I enjoyed that part, you know. And uh, to this day, I don't swim. That's another thing I got to do before I pass away is learn how to swim because. Uh, there's a few things I want to do in my life before I go on, and that's one of them. And the reason why I never learned how to swim in the, in the Navy, everybody can't understand, how do you go to the Navy without swimming? Well, we were going through a commando course, and we were going up a line 25, 30 feet in the air, hand over hand. And by the time I'm coming down, another guy started up the rope, and I let go. And when I fell, I, I broke my ankle. And uh, I was I was in sick bay for I don't know how many weeks, and I figured well my outfit's going to be moved out. I probably won't go with them, but no, they took me with them. They carried me out, and I went with them. And when and when I was on the ship over there, I made sure I stayed right by the lifeboat in case <laughs> I, anything happened. So. Did you have to do anything when you were on the ship? Uh, yeah, we you, you had your chores, but I I got away from it quite a bit because I was laid up, you know. <laughs> So, but uh, it, it was a, it was a good experience, and I, I learned an awful lot from the service. So what did and, you learn? You know, how to for one thing, how to take care of ourselves. You know, because we fresh out of the the young age that I was in, uh, there was not much we did know until we got in the service. We knew what we had to do, and you had to do it when they told you. You know, so. But uh, that, that's about all. So, uh, so you uh, you left for overseas, and you went on a boat. Mm, how a did ship. You, on a ship. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and how did you travel once you were on land? Uh, on that, that we had our own equipment. So. Were you on, like, jeeps or trucks? Yeah, or? We, were, we were on trucks. Yeah. They, tra they transported us on trucks. Did you, were, were you... Uh, I interviewed one gentleman who said, well, he was in the Army, and they moved them always at night. They were always moving well, at night. Yeah, most of the time everything was moved at night, yeah. 
But uh, we didn't, it wasn't too far off of Normandy that we set up this here camp. Well, I don't know how many miles away from the, the shore it was, but it was in it was in a cow pasture. I remember that it was in a cow pasture that we set up the the base. We set up our field kitchen kitchen first. We had tents, and that when we left, there was we were building Quonset huts and everything like that for for the for the wounded, you know. So. Did you did you stay once you built things, or did you move on pretty no. quickly? No, we we stayed. Uh, yeah, we we stayed there for I don't know how many months we were there, but then from there we uh, got seven days of uh, leave at home, and then they sent us back to the South Pacific. So did you actually get all the way home for your leave? Oh yeah, we got home. So what'd you do? Uh, just not much in seven days. <laughs> you couldn't do much in seven days. Where were you? Uh, I was. I was in Chicago. I was living oh. in Chicago so then. So you came all the way back to yeah. Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. And then went all the way back out. And went back again. Yeah. So. So you just hung out. It just just hung out. Yeah. I was too too young to do anything else. You know. So. Couldn't make any trouble. Yeah. Um. What did you eat? What did I eat? Yeah. Well, believe it or not, I used to like the stuff they call dried beef. And on Sundays, it used to be, a, I used to enjoy a meal on Sunday because there's pork and beans on Sunday breakfast. And then we used to have cold cuts in the afternoon. And the one day that we all got sick over in Guam, we all got sick, the whole base. We got some bad lunch meat, and we all got tomain poisoning. And it was a mess going, we were all sitting in the outdoor theater they have the, you know, and all of a sudden everybody started running to the, the head, and we were all vomiting and everything. They found out that we all had, all had a touch of tomain poisoning. <laughs> yeah. So you, so you were, I'm trying to figure this out, you were back in the United States, then you went to the Pacific Theater. Where, where were you? I was, uh, well, we went to a couple couple islands like uh, Tinia, Saipan, and then we wound up on Guam. That's where our, that's where our main base was in Guam. And what were you building in Guam? Well, they were building, uh, putting up huts, you know, Quonset huts. And my job, I was guarding a, a mine. Uh, there was a mine there with all kind of dynamite and everything, and that was my job. I used to stand guard duty there. So. Did you do that by yourself, or were there multiple no, there, guards? No, every every four, three four hours you, you get relieved. You know, yeah. you, you you sit there by the front cave of the by the opening of the cave with with your weapons and just guarded the material in there. That's all. So what did you do? What did you think about? Or did well, you just chat? Uh, nah, there was not much to think about. When you be honest with you, so I just. Did what I had to do. That's all. So, what did it look like? Uh, it was Guam was a beautiful place. It was beautiful, and I used to watch them down there. the The, the people down in Guam, they they had no, uh, not many horses. They used to use water buffaloes, you know, to plow up their their fields and that. And uh, they used to use. Uh, uh, like uh, they didn't have a lot of fertilizer, so they used to. I think it was human waste they used to use for fertilizer hmm. in Guam. That's interesting. So, uh, and uh, that's why they didn't eat too many vegetables. <laughs> 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 but, uh, but but like I say, then from there uh, we just served our time out there, and then we I went back in 1946. I got this church. And then I think it was six months later, I married a uh, wonderful woman and uh, four beautiful kids. And I got uh, two grandchild, two grandkids right now, a, a granddaughter and a grandson. So, so you got a pair. Uh, how did you, well, you said about how to staying in touch with your family, right? Did yeah. they did they send you letters? Oh yeah, they sent me letters. And this this one fellow that I, I referred you to is uh, he was used to 
read the letters and then he helped me answer them back because uh like you say i had not much schooling when i went in did you stop uh, going to school no or did you i just went as long as i could until it was time for me to just walk away yeah. and that's what i did so I do you know how old you were when you stopped well it had to be around 16 17. Yeah. and then to find and a job they, i wasn't well i I, I, like I say, I did any kind of job I can do, you know, whatever I can hold, I held. And to be honest or not, I have never got fired from a job all the while I worked. And uh, and I had, I had whatever job it was there, I don't care what it was, from garbage uh, to sewer or anything, I did because I knew I had a, a family support. So, and then when they went on later in years in life. I just got away from me and uh, busy making payments on my mortgage. So I had to make sure I had a job. And uh, all I got to say, if there's any kids out there today, make sure you go to school because you're going to need it today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're a legend in the literacy program here. Well, Everybody I, knows your name. Oh, I, I tell you, I have met so many wonderful people, wonderful people. Uh, and, so you, uh, didn't, you didn't go to school when you came back. You got married right away, did I you? got married. And, did you know yeah. your wife before you were in the service? Yeah, I knew my wife before. No, I, no I, I'm sorry, I didn't. But we went, we went to school together. We started a kindergarten together. And she, but she went on, and I just fell, I fell down, you know. I fell out. And then six months after I got out of the service, I met her at the bowling banquet. And a few weeks later, we got married. But we did go to school when we were together in kindergarten. I know her. It's almost, yeah, I would say 75 years. I know her. we're going to be married 80 years now. No, we're, I'm married. I'm You're 80. 80. I'm 80. I'm 80. And, uh, uh, we're going to be married June 29th of this year. We'll be married uh, 60 years. So. It's a long time. Um, I asked you what you did when you were on leave. I want to know, did you have any any USO shows? Any place you were? Yeah, they had US shows, but I never I never bothered with them. No? I was, I was too shy. Uh, I... Uh, I used to stay by myself quite a bit until later on in life. My fa well, my father passed away when he, when he was young, but I remember when I was a kid, he used to always tell us, "You're going to do something, do it right, or leave it alone." And I always remember that. So hard to get anything done then, isn't it? Huh? That it's hard to get anything done yeah, then, yeah. isn't it? So. so you didn't go. What did you do instead? Did you read? You obviously you didn't read, but did no. you sit? Did you play games with other children? Yeah, we, I, I, we, no, we went out. The fellows went out. We we seen whatever we could see over in uh, England. You know, when we were stationed in England, uh, I was in uh, London, and uh, I forget what was it. I can't remember the towns in, Lo in London because we weren't there that long. You know. So, <clears throat> so did you go dancing? No, no, out? I was no, I was no Go ball. Make trouble? No, no ball. No, I never got in trouble. I can honestly say, <coughs> I had, <coughs> I have never been in a, a fight or anything like that. Oh, take uh, some fun out of life. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, I just, I was kind of uh, backward because uh, of kind of my problem. I used to stay by myself quite a bit. Were you, yeah. were you afraid people would find out you couldn't read, or were you? Did you just? No, I, I uh, in in a way, I was afraid that they might find out, you know, because uh, in them days, they find criticism right away, you know. But uh, no, I used to have a couple of fellows that I used to hang out with, you know, pretty well. So what did you do with them? Do because yeah. if you say their names, you know they're in the Library of Congress forever. Yeah, it's, uh, like I say, I sure like to look up this one fellow if I could, you know. He might be passed on if he is. May he rest in peace. Because, like I say, he was a wonderful person, mm. and he was—he was my age, you know. But he just—he knew my problem, 
and I never, they, they tell you if you have a problem, go to the chaplain and everything. Well, I, I had no luck with that. So I just stayed, and he just happened to spot me, and he asked me, how come you don't get any mail? And I told him that uh, I have a problem back and forth. He said, well, that shouldn't be no problem. He said, let's get together. And he says, when you get a letter, I'll answer it for you. And so That's a kind uh, person. It was. A, it was. So you, you, had a, you had a chaplain with you? Yeah, we, you? yeah everybody, every element had a chaplain, yeah. Did you ever talk to the chaplain? Not really. No, no, no. I was, like I say, I was too, too ashamed or whatever you want to call it. But, but when I when I got home, I said I better put my pride in my back pocket and forget about it, because uh, I used to, when anybody mentioned anything about uh, any kind of records or anything, you know, I used to break out in blotches, you know. And I used to shy away from it as much as I can, so I would, they wouldn't find out a lot of things. So, so did you? What did you do when you had holidays? What did you do for Christmas and? Uh, well, when we were home, we had we had our little get-togethers when at Christmas time, and that. Yeah. But when I was in the service, to be honest with you, I I really didn't pay no attention to the holidays. Every day was a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> every day was every, a holiday. Yeah, every day above ground was a holiday for me. <laughs> yeah. So if you were you were building things and you, you said that you built um, uh, things for the wounded, did you did you meet anybody who was wounded? Did you ever spend time with people who well, wounded? ever talked to them? Oh. Yeah, uh, I had a couple of good f friends of mine. A big fellow from his name was Red Woods from Dallas, Texas, and uh, he used to call me his son because he was a lot older than me. And he used, he took me underneath his wing, and he used to tell me, "You'll be my son as long as you're here." But he passed away in the service. He was drinking the stuff that they they used to make for. Uh, Beverages, uh, they were drinking torpedo juice and stuff like that. <laughs> and that's how he died? Yeah, I guess that's, the, that's what they carried him out with. He was, he, he was drinking some of the torpedo juice with grapefruit juice and, and uh, just got to him. And they, they, they carried him out that way. So, so did you do, so I, no, I, I never, I never had the, the guts enough to try and have it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, obviously he was someone you knew. Did you have people? No, I just met him. In the, I just met him yeah. in the service. So. You you met him there, but did you have, did you have, funerals for people who were part of your group that died, or did you? No, no, no. no. After I got out of the service, I would never seen anybody after that. Not at all. No, nothing. Did nothing. you join a veterans organization? No, all? no. I uh, I used to uh, the CBs had a. A thing out there. I I used to donate to the CBs for a while there. <clears throat> for their for their children, you know. Uh, and that's that's about what it was. D they put in here. Do you recall any particularly memorable, humorous, or unusual event? I think that's a hard question. <sighs> well, to me at that time, everything was a big event. Yeah, but uh, no, not really. Do you think about it? Do you? Oh yeah. Did you, did you I, tell stories to your kids when you, they were growing up? I just, I just lately, and uh, the kids are just saying, "Well, how come you never think this is interesting?" Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, like I say, I kept pretty close to myself, you know. So I imagine quite a few of the fellows when they came back, they didn't have much to say about us. I'm surprised that I'm here right now, talking to you about it. Well, it's wonderful mm -hmm. for the, for people to know because mm -hmm. they'll they'll always be able to find out. And I think to know the everyday things that you did. Yeah, my hard to my find brother out. was involved. My brother Charles was in the uh, Pearl Harbor attack. He used to get up. He's from Youngstown, Ohio, 
<clears throat> and he used to get up and make all kind of speeches to the school kids and everything. He'd go around and they wanted to know about Pearl Harbor and stuff like that. And he would make speeches. And, uh, he was involved. He was a commander in the uh, the organization. You know, they call them chapters or like a like mm -hmm. a veterans of foreign wars War, or yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah, that's about it, Cap. All right, let me see what else I've got here. That one. All right. Do you remember what it was like the day that you your service ended? Yeah. When I when when I was coming home, I stopped at a well. We I'm so used to calling them pubs. It was a, a tavern, and I was celebrating, and it happened to be Decoration Day. And I think I saluted every flag going down Division Street. <laughs> <laughs> and when I come home, she says, "Oh my God, what did my what did they do to my son?" <laughs> so you you didn't you weren't in the service until later in the war. Do you remember? Do you remember Pearl Harbor Day? Do you remember what? Oh yeah, I remember. I remember Pearl Harbor Day. I wasn't in the service at the time, but I, I remember, and I was wondering what my brother was going through, you know. And then right after that is when I, I said I'm going to be 18, and I, t I talked to my brother, <coughs> and uh, he, that's when he told me he said if you want to get into the navy, go and enlist because you can enlist in the navy. He said, but if they if they draft you, they usually throw you right into the, you don't get much of a choice, you go right into the Army. Yeah. And I wanted to be in the Navy, so. How come? I, because he was a sailor, and I, I wanted to be a sailor too, so. I thought he had a wonderful life until I got there. It wasn't that easy. <laughs> no. Did you, they issued you uniforms? Yeah. Did you have different uniforms? For no, different? no, we, they, they, right from the beginning we got the, the navy uniform yeah so did you have a summer uniform and a winter uniform yeah we had yeah. summer winter uniform and then we had our work uniforms you know so you had a work uniform yeah our our, our uniforms were green you know uh, camouflage green you know so <coughs> so you built rest areas in your green uniforms yeah and what else did you build do you remember oh they they were, the CBs were involved in everything Pontoons. We, we, they were building pontoons for bringing the. In Normandy, they they sunk a row of ships because the water is so rough, coming in. The, they made a break. What they call it a breakwater. Mm -hmm. They took a line of old ships and they sunk them, so it, uh, it would keep the water from, so rough. And what we used to do is put pontoons together. Pontoon was uh, eight by eight by eight. And they welded them together and put motors on the back. And we used to go from shore to uh, the ships and pick up the supplies and bring it back into the shore. And that's what we used to do, to bring the, uh, the supplies in. So you had to do a lot more than just building stuff. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, they built bridges, uh, canals, uh, the, uh, the, army rest, the army camps they used to uh, set up for them. Uh, no, we were involved in a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that they were involved in. Was there anything you particularly remembered making? Anything you you think about putting it together? Or anything you learned that you used a lot? No, mo like I say, most of my time was spent in the in the kitchen, you know, in the the galley. So. Now you said before I turned the tape on, you said your food was better than everybody else's food. Well. I wouldn't say better, but uh, it seemed like it was better because we uh, we prepared it better, I guess, because everybody talks that if you want a good meal, go to the CB base. Well, and, it was uh, you. So, well, was no, you. it wasn't me. I was just <laughs> in the galley part, you know. I wasn't doing the actual cooking. So know. what did you have to do? I was, uh, like, the potato peeling potatoes washing the the pots and pans and and uh, whatever vegetables had to be cut up or stuff like that you know so you never cut yourself no no, no. i'm 
not very talented with knives. No? So I always ask. No, I'm pretty good. I got all my fingers yet. So. <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> so did you learn anything that you took with you when you went home that you used to find a job or you used? No, not find a job. Just, just learned how to do hard work. That's all. <laughs> and and uh, no matter how rough I had it, uh, the dear Lord has been good to me, so I have nothing to complain there. All I want enough time to say thank you. When you right after you were discharged, what did you do those first those first couple weeks? Well, there wasn't much you could do because there wasn't uh, the jobs weren't that plentiful. Everybody was coming back then, but I got tied up with uh, a construction outfit, and uh, I used to set up foundations and stuff like that building homes. Yeah. So you met your wife sometime like five months after you got back and then you got yeah. married about yeah. six months? Yeah, about five, five months after I come out of the service. So, so quick. Mm -hmm. Did So you, you went to work, you didn't go back to school? No. At all? No. You didn't, you didn't take advantage of the GI Bill or no. anything? No, no I didn't. Do you, um, so where, when, you were discharged after the war ended? Well, yeah, because uh, it was in 40, yeah, it ended in 46. So do you remember the day that the war ended entirely? No, remember? no, I don't. I don't, no, no. You didn't have a, nobody mm -hmm. stood up and no. had a party? No. no. Um, did you, you said you, you said you didn't, but did you have anybody you kept in touch with that you met? No. No, I didn't. And you didn't join a veterans organization. Have you ever gone to any reunions? No, no, there's no reunions we went to. No. No? Do they have them? They they have them, yeah, but uh, they were always out someplace, you know. So, you and like I say, I wasn't much for traveling or anything, you know. So. So what part of the city did you grow up in? Uh, they they call it Bucktown. Uh, Damon and Armitage. Oh, see, now you're trendy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was it like? Uh, it was rough. When we were kids, uh, I used to have to stay home from school quite a bit because uh, I wasn't doing any good in school. But I used to be the one to go out and get the wooden coal to keep warm. And me and my brothers used to go up on the track and pick up the coal was up fell off the cars. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Uh, that's, like I say, Kat, that's about it. I, I don't know what else I can say about them. Did you, so you said you didn't talk much about your experiences, but your brother did. No, no. And now your, your notice of separation says that you got a victory medal. How come? What's that for? I really don't know, to be honest, a victory medal. I never paid attention to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it says, well, you were in the European theater, you were in the American theater, you were in the Asiatic Pacific theater, and you got a victory medal. That's what it says. Mm -hmm. It says you, um, before, the, before the war, you worked for Great Lakes Plating. Is yeah, Great right? Lakes Plating Company. That was the only, I think that was the only inside job I ever had. So, what did you do? They were, were different plating, different things. I don't even remember what they were, but we used to plate, you know, long uh, plating, they call it. Yeah. Yeah. For, for like, for parts or? For parts, yeah, parts for machinery or whatever, so. I always think that would be a very interesting thing to do. I don't know why. Yeah. It seems so I, exciting. I just couldn't, I couldn't stand the, the job because uh, I couldn't stand the four walls around me. All my jobs were mostly on the outside. Yeah. I think I only had two jobs, two, two jobs uh, inside, and that was Great Lakes Plating, and I worked for National Tea Company, so. You know what I'm curious about, when you entered the service, did they give you any tests of any kind? Oh, yeah. To decide what you, what you should do? Do you remember any of them? No. All they all they wanted is uh, to get in get into the service. They need men. They they didn't give me any much test at all. Uh, 
That's what I say when I got in there, I realized what I did then, you know. I said, now how am I going to get letters back and forth to my family, you know. And like I say, things were rough, but they were good. You know, they were good times. Nothing that I regretted, you know, so. But when I, when I got back out, just lately, I started all of this year stuff when I was uh, 70, about 70, I think I was, I was 70, 70 year old, and I started thinking about it. No, 73 or 74, I think it was. So it was only three years since I've been going now. But uh, now I can't, I can't get enough. You know? They can't get enough. I want to keep going, go, go, go. You know? so, uh, so what have you been reading? Uh, they got me reading all these year of, of books. Uh, uh, I forget what the heck they call them now. Uh, adventures, uh, you know, the series on adventures and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Do you ever think about reading anybody else's war memoirs? Oh yeah, I, I, I go for all uh, the geographics, the tapes and everything. Mm -hmm. I, I love them. I love the geographic and uh, the history. I like all kind of history. That's why I enjoyed That's what it. I read too. Yeah. That's why I enjoyed when I went down to Springfield. I told my son that I got to see a few of these things down here I want to see and I wanted to see uh, the memorial, which they got a new memorial now. If you haven't seen the new one yet, huh? If you get a chance to see that one, but it is it is good. What's the memorial uh, to? It's uh, about Lincoln, and it's about the Civil War, and it's in 3D. It shows they got a tape. There. I think it's about a 20-minute tape, and about the war, and they have the sound effects, and the, you feel the vibration and everything of the, the guns going off. Oh, wow. And I was I was sitting underneath one of them things that went off. I almost jumped through the ceiling when the <laughs> when the bombs came. <laughs> uh, but it's something something beautiful to see is the memorial and then the new library they put up. And then I went over to see the the Capitol and then I went to see his uh, tomb. So, uh, we're there we're only supposed to be there for the ceremony come back, but me and my son, we stayed two days. So I wanted to see things. Yeah. Then it, um, this is what I think is wonderful, that mm -hmm. when you know how to read, you can learn anything you want. Yeah. I just, I just hope I live long enough now to, to read some of the books that I want to read, you know. Oh, nobody mm -hmm. can. Yeah. There's no, there's no, never there's enough no way. time. Even if you started when you were I, five. I know right now when I when I start now, I look at the clock. It's four hours. <laughs> as we've been monkeying with this for four hours. I mean, the time just flies. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I probably, if, once I start, I'll probably never get anything done. <laughs> <laughs> so but, but I do enjoy cooking. So I, I like to cook. Well, now you can use the recipe books. Yeah, well, in the, in the tape, I told you, there's a lot of books that I got that that I'm dying to get into, you know. So. Do you do a lot of Do you do a lot of boring food, or do you do, you know, cakes and fancy? No, food? I don't. I'm not a pastry man. I'm soups, stews, and uh, boiled foods. I'm and not much on fried meat. No, uh, no cold cuts. Well. <laughs> Cold cuts, but not very much. No. No, not very much. Mostly uh, it's uh, soups. I love to make soup. Give me uh, a few vegetables and a, a piece of meat, and I'll make you a pot of soup. <laughs> See, it's because you had all that practice cutting yeah. those vegetables. Yeah. So you hurt your ankle. You were at Great Lakes when Great, you hurt your yeah. ankle. Great you, Lakes. And you were in sick bay. Did yeah. you did you need any doctors or nurses? No, no, nobody was? had time for you to come in and check in out. They went. They, they there was too many. To no, not really. They uh, didn't care. It was your fault. You hurt your ankle. Huh? No, no, no. It was uh, like I say. It was a it was a commando course that we were going through, and uh, just uh, the the kid, the the one below me wasn't supposed to start climbing up the rope until I came down. 
Well, he was halfway up and I was halfway down. When I seen him, I let go. Yeah. And I and I went down. That's how that's how I broke the ankle. Did they have a were what were the ropes attached to? That was uh, the commander for us. To the ceiling is a a two inch line that you had to go hand over hand. You had to go up and come back down to one of the courses so that they had. Like a big. Like yeah, a it was in the the Great Lakes uh, Hall, yeah, Assembly cool. Hall, where they have the commando courses. So. And everybody calling you Skip. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we had that name. We had that name Orville. No, that's why everybody called me Skip. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody called you Orville at no, all? No, no. Uh, my wife is the only one called me Orville is when I met her. And she looked at me, and I looked at her, and I says, I know you. And she said, I know you, too. Your name is Orville. I said, oh, you must, you, I said, you must, know, you must know me if you call me Orville. Uh, did you, um, I always ask this, did you meet people from, like, other ethnic backgrounds? Did you have a lot of, a lot of different people from different places? Like, I, I talked to one gentleman who knew he met people from, from, a lot of different parts of the United States. He met people from Texas. He met people from, you know, the the East Coast, and then he met people from all different ethnic backgrounds. He thought. No, uh, the only time I met different people like that is when I was in, well, at home we met some people from the Poland, you know, in our neighborhood because it was called uh, Bucktown. There it was all Polish, and uh, the only time I met any other people was when I was in the service of different nationalities, you know. But like I said, I didn't meet. Too much. I didn't because I stayed to myself quite a bit. So. Did you go out when you were when you were stationed in different places? Did you meet the people who live in the that yeah area? yeah when we went to town? I, I you know I met a few of them you know but there was actually that much that just said to them you know. So. Uh, you didn't have to spend a lot of time figuring out how to communicate. No. No. So you didn't ever, you didn't do anything with the service after you were discharged ever, you didn't join no, the no, no. reserves or anything? No, I didn't, I didn't get involved. So. How did your service and your experiences in the service, did that, how did that affect your life? I think it affected it pretty good. Uh, like I say, there's a lot of things that I learned in the service that I wouldn't have learned someplace else, you know, how to take care of myself for one thing, you know, and how to survive, and uh, and uh, like I say, when we were kids, we just we just grew up, you know. So my mother, she had a pretty rough time of it because my father died when he was young, and she she used to make ties and go out and sell uh, neckties to keep food on the table and uh, we pretty like to say my older sister was like a second mother to us because she was always with us you know uh, so. it must have been very hard when she passed away. yeah it was and it was after you came back yeah yeah uh, just I think it was just a few a month or so before I got married she never even got a chance to go to my wedding. So. Uh, Had she been sick while you were gone? Uh, if she, she was, uh, well, she was never a real big woman. She was always frail, you know. And uh, then she used to get these attacks, you know. And she'd tell us all, leave, leave the room, leave the room, you know. And she, she would know when she, this was coming on her, you know. And uh, like you say, it was a, a few, I think it was just a few weeks or maybe a few, maybe a month or so after we were ready to get married, that's when she passed away. She said she was still there when you were And uh, when I, when I uh, after later on, we, di I even, we didn't even remember where she was buried, you know, because, and uh, my brother came in after we were all out of the service and everything, we went to see her thing, and she never had a tombstone. All she had was just a little marker. And I said, you know, I said, before I die, I want to get a tombstone for her. And uh, 
I had four upper, I, I fell and I had a blood clot on my head. And I had to go in four, four, four different operations on my head. And uh, the doctor says, Skip, he said, when you're underneath the anesthesia, he says, you kept saying you can't die, you can't die. I got two things I got to do before I die. He said, what were they? I said, one, I got to buy a tombstone for my daughter, I mean, for my sister. And I said, I, I didn't tell him what the other one was. And this, the other one is I want to read before I die. Yeah. It's a good thing you're sticking around. He's keeping me here for something, I don't know. <laughs> did you? But I did, I did finally go over and uh, I got her the tombstone. So I took care of that problem. And now- Where is she buried? She's a, uh, what is this, uh, uh, Queen of Queen of Heaven? Oh, yeah. all my family's there. Oh, up on, is that up on, the, uh, is, that, is that York Road? Yeah, okay. York Road and uh, what would it be? Uh, like in Westchester area. Yeah, yeah up there. So, so I, I got her the, the, sto the stone. That, so that's one of the problems I wanted to take care of. And now I'm on my way with this. And like the CV says, you can do. So. Is, it, is that what they say? That was the say. You, you never say you can't do, can do, can do. That, that's all we used to say. Well, I don't know. You, what do you mean you don't know? You can do. Okay, I can do. And, uh, we always did it. Right, you got your shower. Yeah. Did you do that thing with the shower and the and the laundry? Did you do that when you were on land or when you were on No, when we were on Guam. When you were in Guam. Yeah, when we were Guam. The other guy said, boy, what is this? He said, we made a shower. He said, I ain't going to stand there and wash clothes. Yeah. And everybody was building on them. They used to take a, a shower or a bath in salt water, mm -hmm. and that after that salt water would dry. You know, think. So what we do is throw fresh water in a 55-gallon drum. After you took a shower in the salt water, you go over and then you rinse off with the, the fresh water. Did you? Where did the fresh water come from? Did it come? Do you? No, they had. They were bringing. Like they were bringing it in. They they purified it and they brought the water in. Oh, that's so. You said before you had the washing machine, you were washing your clothes well, you, and your helmet? Well, yeah, you, you know, like you, you rinse out your clothes and your helmet, or they have buckets wherever you think, you know. So, so uh, when you came home and you got married, did you, did you say to your wife, you know, we should just do this with a helmet? No, no. <laughs> no, she wanted a washing machine, so we got the... <laughs> And I don't blame her, I did too. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever say stuff like that to your kids when they were growing up, you know? Oh, I had it much harder than No, you. no, no. That's what they say. You never talked about anything like that, Dad. How come? And now, now my grandkids, they every time they come tell me, tell me about it, tell me about it. Stories. Yeah. Did your being in the military, did that uh, influence your thinking about the war or the military? Did it did it change the way you thought about war? Oh yeah, 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 it sure did. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I think it's uh, it's not unnecessary to, to be in war, but a lot of it I don't see. Why is it, why does it have to happen that way? We should be able to settle something besides all these kids going over there being killed for nothing. I don't think it's for nothing, but it's to me it's useless. Yeah. Would you, um, do you, did you feel lucky that you were in the Seabees, that you were, that you were, didn't end up in the Army? Oh, yeah. I, I was happy that I was in the, in the Navy part of it, in the Seabees. Uh, but there's one thing I can't understand is, if you watch now, this Saturday is Memorial Day. Now you watch when they start mentioning all the outfits, the Army, the Air Corps, the Marines, uh, Merchant Marines. You see if you hear anything about the CBs. Just, just you, you, for yourself, to see if you, if you hear them mention the CBs. Why do you think they do? I don't know, and I asked my brother. I said, you're, you do a lot of speaking and your different chapters and everything. 
And I said, how come on the Memorial Day or something like that, you very seldom hear anything about it? He said, well, the Navy. I said, I don't care if the Navy is the Navy Seabees. Yeah. They're still a different part of the, the branch. Right. Just I like said, the Army Air Force. And, you know, he called me up. And he says, you know, you're right. He says, I didn't hear anything about the Seabees. They mentioned Army Air Corps and all of them, the Marines and everything. Yeah, Seabees. Just for, just for if you think of it, this Saturday when they have Memorial Day and they start mentioning all the big outfits and everything, see if you hear. Do you think there weren't that many of them? That oh, no, they're, them? Uh, they're still, oh, in, yeah. they're so still operating today. Yeah. Yeah. So that's very curious. And now if they do, they, maybe they'll probably make a liar out of me now. They'll probably start mentioning it. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm well, we told the Library of Congress. Did you? <laughs> right now, we just oh. told them. Because uh, believe me or not, I, I used to I used to tell my wife I said, Virginia I said, er, do you hear it? Or do? She said, no, they they didn't mention anything about the CBs. I said, I don't I can't understand why. Because we were involved in a lot of this stuff. You, if if you go back into the history of the CBs, everybody everybody knows what yeah CBs yeah the CBs. Why were we mentioned? Yeah. I'm gonna. I'll call you, and I'm gonna see if you hear. If you just, if you happen to think of it, I'll look, don't pay I'll attention. Pay attention. I'll, I'll, I'll call around too. <laughs> Mention the CDs. Um, so, is there anything else you want to talk about that we didn't talk about? No, that's about it, Kath. Uh, it's just that I'm, I'm glad I made it to 80 years old. Well, I didn't make it yet, but I got a. <laughs> A few more weeks ago. You're planning on leaving before no, then? So I got uh, October 27th, so then I could say my life is all right. You made it to 80 and yeah. you know how to read. Yeah. Well, if, I, if I never even get any further than what I am right now, I'm happy for what I got. Yeah. And uh, thank God for my tutors, uh, Barbara, Carol and Jean and uh, Felix and uh, all the other librarians have been so good to me. Yeah. You said, oh, do you want to talk about going to Springfield at all? Did you want no, to say no. anything? Do you want them no, to know? No, not, not really. Uh, it's just that I was glad that I, I did go there. You know, so. Well, I think you're very inspirational to mm. people. It's good for people yeah, to hear. All, all my teachers, I said, geez, they, every time I turn around, I give you, I give you credit. I says, all I want is a, a, a halfway decent education. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like I say, I, I went, met some wonderful people. Uh, you couldn't get me in a room like this three years ago. You couldn't get me in here. I don't care what it would be. I think we were that scared. Even, even the wife says, where are you going? I said, I'm going to lie there. <coughs> well, that's what we're for, so people can learn mm -hmm. and not have, to, not have to go anywhere to do it. Yeah. There's a lot of bad people out there, but I've met an awful lot of good ones. Me too, including you. I want to thank you for doing this. Okay. It was wonderful of you, and it's very, it's it's not so easy to tell your story, I think, and it, it, it's good to do it, because if you don't, 